look and see who we've got. And it looks like I may have to make a change because it's been required, not <laughs> demanded of me. But we have Jeremy Miller piloting what he has called Lance, or not to get confused, the Amulet Titan deck, versus Keenan, our numero uno player this evening, playing Burn. Well, we'll have to make sure that... Uh... Jeremy's actually in chat for this one since we changed the name for him. I know he said he was playing another game and tabbing over, but mm -hmm. uh, since you were kind enough to do him, that's solid. But straw poll's going up, guys. Get those votes in. Let us know. Do you like the lands, a.k.a. Amulet Titan deck, or do you like Burn here? And I, and I can't defer to my second-in-command, my partner in crime here, so I have to make this assumption myself. And... You know, jeez, I I can't vote against Keenan, so it's it's purely it's purely heart all That's the way. Because he's your dark horse. He is my dark horse, so I'm going with Burn. Name is still wrong, says Jeremy. I'm not really sure. Uh, that maybe the delay, maybe he hasn't caught that it says lands yet. So uh, the other thing to consider as well is um, oh he needs punctuation um oh so <laughs> the other thing to consider is uh you know again I, I think it's easiest to view the amulet bloom or lands uh <laughs> deck as a combo deck uh and while it's not a combo deck to the the purest sense um you know jeremy is definitely going to be keeping an eye on his life total here he's definitely going to be looking how long can i wait uh, how long do I have until I absolutely have to pull the trigger? And, you know, that's that's the key for him in this matchup is to to see, hey, where's my opening? You know, what's... in in combo is my favorite archetype, so I know full well he has to use his life total as a resource and say, I can afford to take this, I can afford to take this, and then he's just going to have to go. And he's going to either have it or he won't. And, mm -hmm. you know, for a matchup like Burn, that's it's really where it's at. It's It's... Can I assemble what I need to assemble before he kills me? And, you know, so on and so forth. So, My only bingo out tonight is that Dragon Lords are going to wait for creatures and land smashes with a haste double striking titan. So we're, we're all hoping and praying for bingo that Jeremy is going to take the win. Well, I don't know if Jeremy is playing a Tarka in his side. Uh, I know that was John, but I don't know if Jeremy is. I know their lists are fairly different. Um, so probably a little bit better uh, option with the haste double striking uh, Titan. But uh, you, you've got a chance. It's, it's a thing. It's... <laughs> a chip in a chair, as they say. And it's the whole season. Don't forget, guys. If you do want to play the bingo, which, you know what? Let me go ahead. Does it not uh, reset each week? It does not. Oh, so, uh, yeah, so Chris can keep the same card. That's right. And, keep okay, your okay. card, print it, save it, do whatever you have to. and uh, Control, print, screen, copy, yeah. paste, to paint. Yeah. See, I mean, these are all options for you guys so that you can put... You're telling me there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. we got the whole season, eight weeks after tonight, to fill up that bingo board. Stickers are in your future if you do so. And it's all in the hands of our players. No Atarka, says Jeremy. So, uh, Chris, you might be waiting a week on that sticker unless he can Boros Garrison slash Slayer Stronghold up a Titan here this game for you. And I'm sure uh, past Jeremy would do that if he could. <laughs> nice guy, past Jeremy. Let's roll up. It looks like a six. And that looks like a four? Yes. So... Jeremy um, on the play. Not playing Monopoly rolls here. I guess Keenan probably should have yeah. rolled again, but they, uh, they're not doing that. Oh, you need both. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, next week. So you're saying there's not a chance this week. Keenan actually just had a birthday. Uh, he came out to the restaurant and he oh, was celebrating nice. on the patio. He and I did a couple of uh, adult beverages together and uh, he was uh, having a good time that night. Was so. he chatty? He was very chatty, I actually. Hear he, I hear he gets chatty. And that's, uh, that's what he told me. He goes, well, you know, I had a little too much because I was very, very talkative. So, 
Go past me. <laughs> so Keenan going to six. I see an Azusa. I see a spell pierce in Jeremy's hand. And he's going to give that away too. Jeremy's going to play an Ancestral Recall before he mulligans there and draw a couple cards. <laughs> so we've had it for, I think, about a year now. We talked about this. Uh, I can't remember who I was talking with, but the Scry Rule. What do you, how do you feel about the Scry Rule now that it's been in effect for a year? Oh, uh, I think at first, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm like every other Magic player, and when something uh, new comes, I instantly hate it okay uh i see something new and it makes me upset i'm uncomfortable yeah uh, i don't feel safe uh but that was one of the things i think initially i was like well let's see how this works i think it gives a little bit more of an advantage to like combo decks to uh land light decks that might be burn or aggro mm -hmm. uh but i mean it, it definitely gives an equal advantage to everyone but i think there are some decks that like it more i think it's definitely a very good change for the game uh, it's definitely a, a good change for coverage because I think you see less people making questionable keeps knowing now that they can scry, you know, and uh, I think it's definitely been a good thing for the overall state of the game, especially competitive magic because it lets people get a little more information and, you know, you see there Keenan keeps on top and Jeremy keeps yep. on the bottom or puts on the bottom and, uh, you know, we'll see what that really does in this match, but uh, certainly... Jeremy feels much better not having that card in his hand, and Keenan probably feels much better having this card in his mm -hmm. hand. So, And Jeremy starting off with uh, the turn one Kalani Garden to get that zero one plant. And uh, I guess mm. Keenan's going to offer this uh, attack, and Jeremy's going to decline to block. Jeremy in chat referencing an awesome uh, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, I hope. But... Uh, <laughs> Past Jeremy is going to Ancestral Strengths. Or, uh, excuse me, Ancient Strengths. And I'm going to pull that Amulet of Vigor off of that Ancient Strengths, and I can only assume we're going to see a land. If we don't see a land, we're going to need to change the name of the deck from lands. Mm -hmm. that, that can be problematic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably just deciding which land he wants to play. Yeah, and he might be deciding if he wants a tap land or exactly a land to play the amulet. So so there's the stronghold, it looks like. And he's going to play that amulet. Keenan here with the potential to do quite a bit of damage with his swift spear. Uh, I mean, you know, in theory, with max value on his hand, he could deal 8 points this turn if... Uh, uh, excuse me, 9 if Jeremy opts not to block. But... Uh, it's a you know much like the infect deck. That's something you gotta really gotta be leery of. I think Swiss spears really start to put this burn deck over the top to make it a uh, an actual very competitive deck mm -hmm. rather than just a uh, um kind of sometimes I get you. Sometimes I get you. Grabs a sacred foundry off that fetch, taking him to seventeen. And. Wants to play a Goblin Guide. And would also like to play another Goblin Guide. Well. <laughs> huh. Can't block all this. So five damage coming in. Presumably throws in front of a Goblin Guide. And he's going to reveal Summer's Pack twice, I guess. Yep, that's, uh, that's the card that's on top of my deck. So he's going to take uh, three here, it looks like. Yep. From 16. Jeremy with an Azusa in his hand, depending on the other cards and co combination of lands that he has, could really do some damage here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in theory, uh, generating an additional uh, four mana after the Azusa. So let's play the Growth Chamber. Float some mana, bounce it back. Tap his Kalani Garden. He uses a green, green, blue. Probably play this Azusa. Mm hmm. Now he's going to get two additional lands. Mm 
Jeremy using the die there to represent his land drops just so he doesn't make too many. I like or, it. Or not enough. So, plays it, floats it, bounces. He's got one more. Do a full green there in Serum Vision. Scrap a couple cards. Both on the bottom. Good sign for Keenan. So he's got a green floating. Summoner's Pact is four? Uh, yes, two oh, green green. Two green green. Looks so like he's just going to ship it back. Is that the Teleria? Oh, uh, yeah, it's uh, from the Vault Lands, okay. actually. Okay. Teleria West. So, here comes... I see some more Searing Blaze here. Mm -hmm. It's been, like, the the most popular card. Searing Blaze. <laughs> With the Landfall trigger. Uh, presumably pointed at that uh, Azusa and mm -hmm. not one of his own creatures. That's it. So, three more damage, taking Jeremy to 13. Dead Azusa. So, he's going to attempt to crash in for six here. Resuming... <laughs> revealing a Summoner's Pact... Twice again. Mm -hmm. Probably not the card Jeremy really wants to see right now since he's already got the one. Right, right. So, plays the Summoner's Pact. Gets an Azusa. <laughs> Going to go ahead and set up for his next turn. Well, I'm not presenting there would lead me to believe he's got some other shuffle effect about to come here. Mm hmm. Plays a second. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little ill-advised here. He's going to get that Titan out. But uh, I'm not really sure how he intends to pay the requisite 8 mana next turn. And... Jeremy letting us know that he might also not be sure how he's going to pay the requisite eight <laughs> mana next turn. <laughs> Max wouldn't have done this. Gets Vesuva, gets Boros Garrison. So it looks like Jeremy uh, copied the Slayer Stronghold with the Vesuva trigger with the bounce on the stack from the Boris Garrison and then activated to give old Primetime uh, plus 2 plus 0 oh, haste and vigilance. Okay. And uh, he looks like he's swinging in again to search for two more things. But as Jeremy's pointing out in chat here, uh, he's going to need quadruple green on his upkeep. And he doesn't really have any lands in his deck to the tap for double green. So, hmm. Looks like this might be one for the bingo boards. <laughs> I think I just noticed. <laughs> uh, it 
pebble green. Nope, green, blue, green, black. Mm, just one green. Hoping it's in there somewhere. <laughs> Hoping that between me building this deck and fielding it tonight, Wizards printed this card that I could use. Huh. Well... <laughs> back to tracks count. Let's see, Jeremy. Hope upon hope that he's gonna pull something. Here's a growth chamber. Here's another growth chamber. So you know, as we see, we he has triple green. Yep, all from the attack from the Titan. Keenan going to go to nine. Keenan's winning game via patience. <laughs> uh, slightly other issue here is that Jeremy only has seven mana, but uh, again, the triple green is as much a killer as anything. Although, it looks like he might have extra land plays here, potentially. Yeah, he should have uh, two more, correct? Ah, uh, well, see, the issue, though, is if he plays another Karoo, uh, he has to bounce either a green source or a Boros Garrison, which would still keep him at seven mana. So, if he bounces the Kahani uh, Garden, he loses a green source. But if he bounces the Boros Garrison, he's going to lose two mana. So, yeah. Burning Scone pointing out uh, effectively an abridged version of what I said. There is the Sakura Tribe Scout. Okay, so you use the die to tick down. Yeah, if, uh, if he can somehow uh, scooter land into play here that's green, I believe he'll, uh, he'll be alright, actually. Oh. I... Uh, he... Can, can he Vesuva that... In theory, yeah, he can. On his untap? Mm-hmm. Reveals a spell pierce there. Some information for Keenan. He's going to reveal it twice. Here it is. Oh, that's right. Oh, we did pack for Scooter. I missed that. Well... <laughs> Here's the thing. A Tarka's command, three damage to you, and pump the team, and oh, he didn't have to die in a pact. Yep, he uh, he died before it. Keenan is obviously not a bingo player, or else he would have... He would have uh, let this happen. Yep, he would have just been like, well, you know, you don't have it, so we're going to get a new little spot on the bingo card for it. Now I don't know if I want to vote for Keenan anymore That's in right. my pick. Took away the bingo spot. Keenan the scumbag. <laughs> but we're going to move the sideboards. Let's take a look and see what uh, Keenan and Jeremy have brought this evening for their sideboards. Um, so Keenan, obviously the most difficult of sideboards. Uh, two Deflecting Palm, four Destructive Revelry, three Path to Exile, two Sudden Shock, two Exquisite Firecraft, and two Skullcrack. Um, let's see. I like both Deflecting Palms. I like... Uh, I think you just like Deflecting Palm. Yeah. I think it's in a sideboard you want it brought in, right? Me? Yeah. Personally? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. no. I, I just want to see the Deflecting Palm kill. I mean, yeah, I'm looking out for the big war players. <laughs> uh, but also, it's just seems it seems fine when... The 
lands, amulet, titan deck, whatever you want to call it, um, is the same thing would say if like I saw a blessed alliance. You know, that's Blessed Alliance being able to make your opponent sacrifice an attacking creature, like, there, it's Pierce all the way. Oh, yeah. Um, there's no wide straight. Oh, I, I will say there is none, but you're not going to see that. It's not common for that deck to play wide. Yeah, and I believe you're right. I think that he only attacked the Primeval Titan the whole game, so. Mm-hmm. Um, so, definitely something to consider. Pad the Exile. I don't even have to tell you guys. You already know. And, um,. I, I think that's about it, truly. Um, I know that the Exquisite Firecraft is not terrible because it's four damage, just being able to accelerate a little bit more, but it does cost three, one, two red. Uh, Sudden Shock's interesting. Uh, I don't think that you bring it in, but I think that it is a uh, pretty amusing inclusion uh, against the Sakura Tribe Scout. Uh, you could maybe uh, invoke a little salt with that. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Jeremy on the other side is playing one Bajukabog, one Fire Spout, one Leyline of Sanctity, one Grafdigger's Cage, one Hornet Queen, one Nature's Claim, one Pithing Needle, one Seal of Primordium, one Spell Skite, one Swan Song, one Thrag Tusk, one Malira, Silver Outcast, one Skyline Cascade, one Radiant Fountain, and one Engineered Explosives. You like how I left you with the long one? Yeah, uh, nice that's that's the old 15 uh, unique card sideboard <laughs> from Jeremy Miller for us. Uh, you know, looking at it, uh, depending on, you know, how well Jeremy knows Keenan's deck, and I think he does know pretty well, uh, you know, obviously Leyline comes in, that's that's a pretty easy given. Uh, Thrag Tusk is definitely an option, uh, as well as Spell Skite. Both those cards seem fine for this matchup. Uh, the interesting one to me is the, I have to find it again here, Fire Spout. Uh, you know, that game, he went really wide. Uh, the Fire Spout would have definitely helped get rid of all of those creatures. Um, so I could see him considering bringing it in. Uh, nothing else offhand really stands out too, too much. Radiant Fountain, maybe. Um, you know, but uh, Engineer Explosives, again, is a possibility. I think a lot of this is going to come down to thinning and, and what, uh, what um, Jeremy has in his main deck that he feels comfortable taking out. I mean... Again, the explosives would have done the same thing as a fire spout there for three mana. Just get rid of all the one mana dorks and, you know, he, you reset the board as far as that goes. Okay, alright. Um, can you make an argument for the skyline after seeing what it did Maybe in the game against Jorge? The only concern I have is that I think it's a little too slow. A little too slow? I think that, uh, you know, when you're using it on like a 3-2 flyer, like Insectile Aberration, as dumb as it might sound, you're looking at 2-2... Two, two, uh, Goblin Guides, or 2-3, three, sometimes 3-4 three, uh, Swiss Spears. I really don't think that that's where you really want to be. Uh, okay. You know, I think trying to be a little more a little more proactive is, is good, but I think the Skyline Cascade probably really shines in the, um, the uh, mid-range decks where you've got some more fat swinging at you. Mm, okay. I was like, you just cancel yourself out. But I got it. I got it now. Yeah, and the explosives for sure. I mean, especially on one because he is running Sakura Tribe Scout. He is also running Amulet of Vigor. So uh, Fire Spout is definitely, you know, preferable for him to have versus the uh, Engineer Explosives. Keenan immediately shipping that seven. Oh, that's a good point. Doesn't kill the Amulet. Jeremy, looking at a seven, trying to decide. Or maybe he's already decided. Yeah, at this point he probably should have if Keenan's continuing to mulligan. If we're by the book. Scry, leave that directly on top. Gemstone mine, Amulet of Vigor. Jeremy kind of kind enough to give us a little of his uh, thought process and chat there for those of you that want a little more insight on the deck. Keenan's 
Keenan going to go to 17. Stomping Ground is his land of choice. Uh, I don't think Keenan has seven cards. Lava Spike? He should have uh, one, two, five cards in hand. Molt to seven for the win. Yeah, it looks like he only has five cards in hand there. Which he should have Mulligan to six plus one for the draw. Simic Growth Chamber. Float a little bit of mana. Bounce that gemstone mine back. Play this Azusa. Now I am game to play some more lands. Looks like he's still got five in his hand there. I'm, I'm pretty confident he's got uh, hashtag Keenan is not a cheater. <laughs> not a scumbag. Not a scumbag. Even though I said he was. <laughs> Here's the gems though. Mine. <laughs> he may steal the win. But he doesn't draw seven on a mall. Does have a destructive reverie in hand. Blunt stayed higher. Yeah, and it looks like Keenan is queuing up a searing blaze and a destructive reverie, so he's probably trying to figure out should I blow up this amulet or should I blow up this Azusa? Mm -hmm. He's going to start going to 16. Let's get a mountain. The other thing to consider, I don't know exactly if uh, he noticed, noticed, excuse me, Jeremy was on the play here, and with that Azusa, did Jeremy actually miss a land drop? He did. I believe he did. He should have been able to play three lands this turn. Total. So if he started with uh, one lane in play, and they played his, tapped it for mana, played his growth chamber, tapped that for two mana, it would be three for his user. So it actually looks like that Jeremy doesn't have any more lands in his hand. Presumably, I don't think that he would miss a land drop on purpose or on accident. So the correct thing to do there probably is blowing up the amulet because he didn't fully utilize his user last turn. So if Keenan was paying close attention, it might have been an easier decision than it seemed. Growth Chamber. So it looks like going to replay Gemstone yeah. for a second land. Swing for one. Pass back. Sacred Foundry. Searing Blaze. Looks like now he's going to fire off the uh, Burn Spell to Azusa. Krakow, here's a Goblin Guide. Take two more. Reveal a Sakura Tribe Scout. Jeremy not quite in trouble yet, unless Keenan is also playing hit it to your second rank. I don't think that he is, though. we got to make it happen, guys. Hitsugu second right on stream. Someone do it. Someone vote for this. Although I believe I'm the only person in the store with four copies. Yeah. So. What set did that come out of? It was one of the Kamigawa, right? Uh, Saviors of Kamigawa. Saviors. It's got the lantern on it. Okay. Some of this mana. Jeremy providing a little more insight in chat there, and he looks like he did bring that signed Jeff Miracola fire spout in. Paying red and green just in case uh, 
Keenan can give it flying, I guess. And please, Scooter, pass it back. Lava Spike, you. Uh oh. Here's seven. <laughs> Strong Smash, we were actually just talking about that before we fired up uh, about how one of my biggest frustrations as a viewer is the stream delay. So it's nice to finally be on the right end of it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Here's one. Send a message. I like how aggressive Jeremy's getting with that uh, Sakura Trap Scout there. Getting frisky. Float some mana. Play engineered explosives. Presumably on one. For one. Boros Charm. You. I have you at three. And show me a burn spell. Oh, he's going to blow up the EE with the destructive river. It's going to put him at one. So presumably Kim does not have one of the three damage spells in his hand. Uh, and it looks like Jeremy's actually going to blow that up to yeah. avoid taking the two. Yeah. But losing a Sakura Trap Scout in... Oh, um, well, it's a good thing he did that because yeah. this old Goblin God was coming to party. Does draw a blocker and spell sky though, and also a uh, a little uh, damage prevention. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Bellskite. Passes back. Keenan Helbent mm -hmm. draws that's awkward. Searing Blaze. Without landfall to deal one, one. to the Spellskite and one to Jeremy. Huh. It, uh, yeah, you can't redirect that uh, one damage back to Spell Sky, as Jeremy's pointing out in the chat there. That's, uh... Oh, he's got blue mana. I mean... Ye well, unfortunately, the Searing Blaze deals one to target creature. Right. And right. one to its uh, yeah. controller. Yeah, I mean, if it was to... any other spell besides Searing Blaze. Yeah. Oh. A couple Titans. I still had all these Titans that I was unable to cast. Right. Mana short there, unfortunately. Huh. Well, Keenan. That puts Keenan at uh, undefeated that week. This Un week, five zero. That's right, undefeated. Walking out with fifteen points total. After that, two zero against Jeremy. And there we are. Oh, look at Jeremy just filling up yeah. the chat. We appreciate that. Somebody had to since I was here tonight. That's true. So. That's true. It's it's tough to carry your you know it's a gaunt, a big gauntlet to carry. I'm awfully heavy, so Jeremy's back. No, must that's hurt. No, that's, that's, it's gotta hurt. That's not <laughs> can I now? I'm curious. I'm gonna see if I can do this. I don't think I can. Uh, giveaway sticker. Oh, I can. All right, guys, this is fun. We are at the end of the night, and as always, if you guys. Type in sticker without quotes. You can win one of these lovely stickers. The only caveat is, is you have to be following the stream. So be sure to follow at the real Nan Man, and as well, not for the giveaway, but just for future reference, we will be moving to Modern Magic Mondays next week. So be sure to follow that link, twitch.tv slash Modern Magic Mondays, and also hit the follow button there. Just so you guys get alerted for when we go live each and every week, 6.30 p.m. ish. Ish. Steven Christ, what's going on? 
It's like 15 seconds. I can't do this. Um, but I want to say thanks. Yeah, thank you, man. For it's good to, uh, hopping in, good to be here. filling in on the other side. Super appreciative of that. I know Nan appreciates that as well. It's uh, being able to have you here. Well, I'm sure Nan's fiance as well because I'd hate to have to cancel their honeymoon. Well, his wife now. Wife, wife. His wife excuse now. me, wife. I'm not fiance to, anymore. I'm going to have to yeah. retrain myself. <laughs> Absolutely, though. Uh, but yeah, we're going to keep this giveaway going just for about another minute. So just type in, stay, you can't even type in, well, I guess you can if you really want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not fair at this point. Well, so far it's a 50-50 coin flip. So uh, someone else should get in there to make it uh, 33 and a third percent. Yeah. I don't want to get in there because you just said 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Bloom is still upset that you have to fill in. <laughs> Why is Bloom upset? I don't know. Oh, all I don't right. Know at all. But what did you what did you think? What did you think about sitting on the other side, being a part of the behind the scenes? Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, it's interesting because I'd considered doing it for Commander, uh-huh. best format in yeah. Magic. Oh, uh, okay. Close right. second is Modern. Okay. But uh, I've considered doing it for Commander. Um, it's definitely, um, like I said, quite the rig. You have thirty plus screens here, oh, and nice. uh, you know. It's uh, it's it's enjoyable though. It's uh, great to have people like Jeremy and Chad and then the rest of everyone else to kind of make it. Well, I'm not just talking to myself here. Mm-hmm. This is uh, yeah. this fun. So, um, you know, and I've seen you do it on other mediums with like your uh, Friday night, uh, your Friday casual streaming, mm-hmm. casual Friday and yep. casual Thursday. Casual so, Thursday, Friday. Whichever uh, I've seen day. you do it there as well. So it's uh, it's just good to see the back end of it, and it's um, you know, different to see what you and uh. Uh, old Nan have to uh, put in every week and mm-hmm. uh, have a, a bigger appreciation for that. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. I, hey, if you guys are interested, also follow us here at, at Modern Magic Mondays, at Farms R and R, at the Real Nan Man, at Dionysus Bacchus, and shoot him DMs. Say, let's make this Commander thing maybe a thing. Come on, maybe. come on. I'll help out. I'll, I'll help you set it up. Right, if you, right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you want to involve Trip, the the store owner. Uh, I mean, he and I don't get along in Commander. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. When we play Commander, it usually ends up uh, a big, big fight, like most Commander games do. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very political. Drewski what? Brew. Dude, Drewski Brew with the $20 donation. Thank you so much. We definitely do appreciate that. Uh, Jeremy wants us to say Polo. Okay. Polo. <laughs> I think I just need to type giveaway. Yo, Stephen Christ winning. Christ. Christ. Both. Yep, I'm going to run with Chris. Could be Christy. Christy, yeah, yeah Christy. Congratulations, dude. <laughs> if you uh, are not interested in shooting us a DM here at twitch.tv slash at the real name, and you can shoot it to Nan, you can shoot it to me at Farmazur and R as a DM on Twitch. Uh, I can also send you the email uh with your address just so we can uh send you your sticker sir um that way we can mail that to you but as always thank you guys so much for all your support coming to hang out with us big thanks to chris eminem at dionysus Bacchus for filling in and you, doing a fantastic job uh to trip the owner uh throwing money our way letting us come in and film all of this um, content for you guys. Thank you. And to our big stream donors, Drewski Brew, as you just saw, thank you again, dude. Uh, Atticus, our mystery donor, Thatcher Damas, Lila Goyf, Nate Hop 34, Burgleton, Storm Dust 07, Badger 934, Weeaboo Web Dream. These, this list just keeps going on and on, and I cannot thank you enough. And on behalf of Nan and myself, we will catch you at twitch.tv slash Modern Magic Mondays next week for another week number three. Uh, what? Dude, Atticus, sitting at home alone, has $10 to throw our way. Thank you so much. Man, we will be at Modern Magic Mondays, twitch.tv slash Modern Magic Mondays for week number three next week at 6.30 p.m. I am Farmer Zernar. Dionysus Bacchus. There it is. And we are rounding it up for tonight. You guys have a fantastic evening.